Welcome to our lecture online. So far, when we've seen supply and demand equations, they were linear. And linear supply and demand equations are not as realistic as nonlinear supply and demand equations. So in this example, one of the equations, the supply equation, is a nonlinear equation. And we're trying to find out the point of equilibrium, where the supply and demand will be equal to one another. So you can see here, with the supply equation, the higher the price, the greater the supply. And here, the demand equation is the lower the price, the greater the demand. So x represents quantity demanded and quantity supplied, and p represents the price. So where do they meet? Where do they balance out? Well, we have to solve the two equations simultaneously. So in this case, since both equations are expressed in terms of the price, we can actually set the two equations equal to each other. We can set the supply equation equal to the demand equation. So in this case, the supply equation is 2x squared plus 3. And on this demand equation, we have minus 11x plus 9. And so that means that this simply turns into a quadratic equation. We can move everything over to one side. We can have 2x squared plus 11x plus 3 minus 9 equals 0. Or 2x squared plus 11x minus 6 equals 0. So, is this factorable? Well, it might be. 2, 6. We could try it. Or we could simply put it into the quadratic formula. Hmm, just to make sure, I'm going to put it into quadratic formula. So, let's try it. We have x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 121, minus 4 times a times c, which is a minus 6. So right away we can see that the determinant is factorable. It is factorable. Well, it could very well be. Divided by and 2a would be 4. So x equals minus 11 plus or minus the square root of, so this is uh, 24 plus 4, that's 48, plus this gives me 169 divided by 4. So this is equal to minus 11 plus or minus 13 over 4, which means that this is equal to, when you add them two together, you get uh, 2 over 4, which is 1 half, or when you subtract the 2, you get minus 24 divided by 4, which is minus 6. There we go. And remember, we were looking for the quantity demanded. So a negative quantity is probably not a good quantity to have, but a positive quantity is. So this is the only good solution. You cannot have negative quantity, so that's a bad solution. We throw it away. And now to find out what the corresponding price will be, we go ahead and plug the value for x in there. So the price when x is equal to 1 half is equal to minus 11 times 1 half plus 9, so it would be equal to minus 5.5 plus 9, which is equal to, and that would be 3, uh, that would be 4.5, so that would be plus 4.5, oh, 3.5, 3, 8, 9, there we go. Okay, so the price when x equals 1 half is equal to 3 and a half. Now, we need to also plug that into the other equation to make sure we get the same result. Otherwise, we made a mistake. So the price when x equals 1 half is equal to 2 times 1 half squared plus 3, which is 1 quarter times 2, plus 3, which is equal to 1 half, plus 3, which is 3.5. So you can see that we get the very same result when x equals 1 half, we get the very same result for the price in both cases, which tells us we did the problem correctly and we have found the right answer. When the quantity demanded or the quantity supplied equals 1 half, you get the correct value. Now, of course, you say, well, wait a minute, how can you have quantity demanded equal to 1 half? Well, the 1 half could represent 1 half of a thousand or 1 half of a million, 1 half of whatever. It's just the methodology that was important, and this is how we do that. It's probably an easy one to, <clears throat> to, um, to factor.
אוקיי. סלזון.